question 15 of section 1 of the 2018 higher physics examination and this time we're given a circuit and it's set up as shown the battery has negligible internal resistance we're told that just means we don't need to worry about the battery's internal resistance take it that it's not there a student makes the following statements about the readings on the meters in this circuit and there's three statements here statement number one says the following it says when switch s is open the reading on the voltmeter will be 6 volts. Now, when switch S is open, it effectively takes that resistor away, and you're left with two 10 ohm resistors in series with one another. A voltmeter across one resistor will give a value of 6 volts because you've got two identical resistors acting as a, acting as a potential divider, and you've got 12 volts, so one resistor must take half, so the reading in the voltmeter will be 6 volts, and that will be correct. When switch S is open, the reading on ammeter A2 will be 0 0.60 amps. Now, in order to work that out, it's the same condition. We have two 10 ohm resistors and we have a 12 volt battery. So let's find out current A1 because if we can find out current A1, that will be identical to current A2 because there's nowhere else for the current to go. So in this situation, we put down our three variables associated with electricity, V, I and R. The voltage is going to be 12 volts. The current flowing the circuit is what we're after, the current leaving the circuit. And the resistance of the circuit, the total resistance of the circuit is going to be 10 ohms and 10 ohms, which is going to be 20 ohms. So therefore, all we have to do is work out the value of the current, which equals V divided by R. So we have 12 volts divided by a total resistance of 20 ohms. And we can do that, and that's going to give us a value of 0 0.60 amps. So 0 0.60 amps leaves the ammeter, and it goes round here, and A2 will read 0 0.60 amps as well, and the electricity flows in that direction, all the way around there. So we're going to have that one ticked as well. Now the next statement, statement 3, is when switch S is closed, the reading on ammeter A1 will be what? Now, when you close switch there, you're really effectively bringing that resistor into play. And therefore, that switch is closed. So now you have two 10 ohm resistances in parallel. Now, that will affect the total resistance of the circuit. And if it does, it will affect the total current leaving a circuit, which is what we're looking for, ammeter A1. So we put down our three variables again, V, I, and R, and the voltage doesn't change, 12 volts, the currents leaving the battery is what we're after, and the total resistance does change. You're going to have a 10 ohm resistor in, par a 10 ohm resistor in parallel with another 10 ohm resistor, which gives you effectively 5 ohms, because just half the resistance of the two identical resistors in parallel. So we have a 10 ohm resistor in series with a 5 ohm resistor, so the total resistance is going to be 15 ohms. So the current does change. So we come to work out the current this time. We'll do it down here. The current is V divided by R. Again, it's going to be 12 volts. But this time, you're going to have a smaller resistance, 15 uh, ohms. So 12 divided by 15, if we do that in our calculator, and that's going to give us an answer of 0 0.80. So 0 0.80 amps. So 0 0.80 amps will leave the circuit here, it will move down here and it will split up to give you 0 0.4 there and 0 0.4 there. So ammeter A2 will read 0.4 but we're asked what does ammeter A1 read and it does read 0 0.80 amps. So it seems to be that the answer will be 15E. All three statements are correct. Here is a representation of the circuit as drawn in the PHET simulation site. It's a wonderful site and I'll give you a link to that at the end of the question. Now we've already done the theory of it, so let's see the kind of practice of it. We can see that switch S is open at the bottom and the current A1 is going to be 0 0.6 amps. And that'll be the same as the current flowing through the top resistor because effectively if you keep the switch open, you are cutting off that branch and the current is nowhere else to go but through the 10 ohm resistance. So you're going to get 0.60 amps leaving the battery and going through the top branch and then leaving the top branch.
The voltage is exactly the same as well because we have two 10 ohm resistors in the series and that constitutes a potential divider. So 12 volts will be shared equally among these two resistors. You're going to get 6 volts each. Just to prove it to you, if I take the voltmeter and place it across this branch, you should still get 6 volts. Bingo! 6 volts. So we know that's a potential divider. So I'll put the voltmeter back across the 10 ohm resistance. Now, that first part statement says when switch S is open, the reading on the voltmeter will be 6 volts, and that is correct. So the first statement is correct. The second statement, when switch S is open, the reading on A2 will be 0 0.60 amps, and that's correct as well, because the current has got nowhere else to go except for that top branch. The third statement is when switch S is closed, the reading on A1 will be 0 0.80 amps. And A1 is reading right now 0 0.6 amps. So when we close it, yeah, we get 0 0.80 amps leaving the cell. Why do we get an increase in current? Well, because what we've done when we close the switch is we have effectively half the resistance uh, on that part of the circuit. The two 10 ohm resistors in parallel become 5 ohms. So you're going to have 15 ohms instead of uh, 20 ohms. So you've actually reduced the resistance of the circuit and therefore if you reduce the resistance of the circuit you, you get a bigger current leaving the battery so 0 0.80 amps but look carefully at the resistance through the top branch it's halved and it's half because the 0 0.80 amps going into the branch has got two directions to go it can go the top way and go the bottom way and since both have equal resistance the current will half so that's the sort of kind of like a practical demonstration of it and I can see that if I take the voltmeter across the branch now, I'm going to get a total of 4 volts across it. So if I do that, and do that, I get 4 volts. When I open the switch, you can see it's back to 6 volts again. Close the switch, back to 4 volts again. Because that's, between here and here, is going to have a smaller resistance. Therefore, you're going to have a smaller share of the voltage. Now, I urge you to go to that uh, PHET site and build a circuit and experiment with it and you can see the theory uh, as we just described earlier in this question solution come into action for real. Question 16 from the section 1 of the 2018 Higher Physics Examination. The power dissipated in a 120 ohm resistor is 4.8 watts. The current in the resistor is, and you're given the five choices again. Now, one of the words that puts people off here is this word here, dissipate. Dissipate means just to be lost in. So what we're saying here is the power dissipated, the power lost in the 120 ohm resistor is 4.8 watts. We're losing 4.8 joules every second as the electricity passes through that resistor. And that's why resistors get warm to touch them. So how are we going to solve this one then? Well, we go to our data book and you can see we have a whole list of equations from the electricity unit. And what we're looking for is something which is going to fit into these categories here. And you have voltage, you have current, you have resistance, and you have power. You remember that bit of word, VIP. So you're looking for something which has got a power associated with it. And in this case, the power is going to be 4.8 watts. And the resistor has got a resistance of 120 ohms. So the resistance is 120 ohms. And you're asked to find the current in the resistor. So you don't think about V. So you're looking for an equation with I, R, P in it, current, resistance and power in it. And as you can see from the list of equations here, the one we're going to stick with is power equals I squared R. So we put down an equation. The power is going to equal to the current squared times the resistance. So all we have to do then is just rearrange things. The power divided by the resistance is going to equal to I squared. And therefore, to find the I on its own, we must take the square root of the power divided by the resistance. And that gives us our answer. So we just need to plug in the numbers now. The power is 4.8. And we're dividing that by 120. And we're taking the square root of it. And our answer turns out to be uh, an answer 0 0.20 amps. If we do that in my calculator, 0 0.20 amps. Keep to the two significant figures. 
So that's going to give us an answer of C in the multiple choice question. Question 17 from section 1 of the 2018 Higher Physics Examination. A 24.0 micro Farad capacitor is charged until the potential difference across is 125 volts. The charge stored in the capacitor is one of the five answers. Now, when we're dealing with capacitors, we know we have the following units of capacitors. We know capacitance is C, we know we have a charge Q, and we know we have voltage V. In this particular question, we know that the voltage across the capacitor is going to be 125 volts. We know that the capacitor is 24 microfarads. Now, 24.0 microfarads is exactly the same as 24.0 times 10 to minus 6 farads. Okay, so what equation we're going to use, C, Q and V? Well, you can always take out all your uh, data book questions and you can go and find out where you can find a capacitor question. It's down the bottom there, C equals Q upon V. That's it, ringed there. C equals Q upon V. So we'll move the data sheet out now and put in the equation C capacitance is equal to the charge stored in the capacitor divided by the voltage. I'm being asked to find the charge stored in the capacitor, so we have to cross multiply uh, to get what the charge is. Q is going to be equal to the capacitance multiplied by the voltage. And all we have to do after that is just therefore work out on our calculator the charge is going to be equal to the capacitance, which is 24 times 10 to the minus 6, multiplied by 125, and the answer is going to be, quite simply, 3 times 10 to the minus 3. Units of charge are coulombs, which is almost the same as the same symbol for the capacitance. So 3 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs, and the answer for that one will be 17D.